Beloved, in our part three series of Growing Spiritually Through God's Word, I want us to look at the fact that you and I need to eat all of God's Word and watch yourself change. Not only do most Christians want to grow, but they also want to be different. Now, what the Bible calls renewed or transformed into stronger, more powerful, more effective servants of God. That is exactly what Paul is talking about in Romans 12, 2, when he says, Do not, do not be what conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As every Christian well knows, the old mind with its habits of self preoccupation, its craving for sensation and vain imagination, and its appetite for what is veiled and gross is still there. The flesh is the corporate that keeps us going back to junk food. The flesh is the subtle enemy that keeps us feeding only on love when we should be eating meat. The flesh is what keeps us from being transformed and interfering with our commitments to God and His Word. We keep going around, like merry go round, around and around, and never seem to find the secret. That is because the key to the mystery lies right under our noses. Paul gives us a clear explanation in 2 Corinthians 3, 14 to 18, as he describes the glories of the new covenant that Christians have with God. It goes back to the time Moses and the Israelites. At one point, after being on God's presence, Moses' face shone with such brilliant glory that he had to put a veil over it in order not to blind his people. But as glorious as Moses' ministry of the Lord to the Israelites was, Paul says that it does not compare with the surpassing glory of the gospel of Christ and the new covenant that he installed with his death and resurrection. As he tells us in 2 Corinthians 3, 7 to 11. And Paul goes on to say that since you and I have such a wonderful hope in Christ, we can be very bold. Therefore, Paul declares, since we have such hope, we use great boldness speech. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 12 to 14. What Paul is simply saying here is that the Jews of his day who didn't know Christ couldn't understand the gospel because their minds were veiled. They could not see the Lord because the veil of the old covenant, the law, stood in the way. And Paul goes on to say that the veil remains unlifted, unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies in their heart. My dear brother, my dear sister, in spite of this, nevertheless, when you and I turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3, 4, 14 to 17. Then Paul comes to the thought that I'm not concerned with Paul comes to the, to, to the thought that he's most concerned with. By declare that, but we are with unveiled face, beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed 
into the image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3 18. That's Paul tells us that we can be what? Change into the image and glory of Lord. It is very simple. He says, we don't change ourselves. We just turn, staring into the face of Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God does the transforming for us. You may be saying, oh, there's just one hitch. And so if I'm supposed to look on the glory of the Lord, where do I find it to look upon? And of course, the answer to that is in the God, God's Word. Remember, James tells us that the Word of God is like a mirror. If you keep learning and beholding the glory of God in His Word, the Spirit of God will transform you into the image of Christ. It is just that simple and just that difficult. Especially if you refuse to do it. You see, when Christians are seeking shortcut to growth, and so they depend on dreams, visions, prophecies, always jumping, praising God. I'm not saying all these things are wrong, but these are the byproducts of the living word of God. And that is why we need to spend time with the word. Now, in resting days, they haven't even been trying to make, you know, let me put it that way, as somebody said, quantum leaps to a super spirituality. You see, but the shortcut simply doesn't exist. You see, the greatest event that ever happened in my life, next to my salvation, was the day I learned to study God's way. I find that the longer, the more intensely and the more devotedly I look into the glory of Jesus Christ through the pages of Scripture, which is the living way, the more the Spirit of God changes my life into the image of Christ. You see, there are no shortcuts, my dear brother, my dear sister. If I'm to grow, if I'm to mature, and to finally be transformed, I must feed on the Word of God. My dear brother, my dear sister, lack of growth is sad to see in anyone or anything. It is especially tragic in Christians. But unfortunately, too many believers don't seem to be growing very much in their faith. The major cause of their lack of faith, lack of growth, is failure to read and study the Word of God and obey it. And so in 1 Peter 1, 23, all the way to 2 to 3, as we just read from the beginning of this series, the great apostle compares God's word to two things that are vital for life and growth. Ah, uh, what? An imperishable seed and the milk of the word of God. An imperishable seed and the milk of the word of God. And milk of the word. You see, as Christ taught in his parable of the sower, God's word is like a seed that brings about new birth just as a seed contains the power and energy of life so does god's word now before a christian can get the most from feeding on god's word he or she needs to get rid of the junk food diet that is so tasty to the flesh that all believers still have within them peter describes the junk food diet as the evils of worldly malice the guile of deceitfulness the phonies of hypocrisy, the self-centeredness of envy, envy, and the slander of gossip. If we want to change our diet, we should start with the sincere milk of the Word of God. We need to spend time reading the Bible. We need to study it with the assistance of even Bible helps. Are you with me? At times even with various commentaries fully immersing ourselves in God's word will guarantee our spiritual growth our goal is to become fully mature and transformed through feeding on the solid found solid food solid word of God solid food solid living word of God 
found in scripture and my dear brother my dear sister an accurate description and watch word for any christian can be found in jeremiah 15 16. your words were found and i ever them and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart for i am called by your name O lord god of hosts feed eat drink the word it will give you life have a wonderful day and bye for now